morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this uh, country as well, pay my respects to their elders past and present of the Nyumbali people and the custodians of this country, the Māori people. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which um, the Karajin experience operates in and around. Um, we have a fantastic emerging partnership with Inawonka people, uh, New Bali people, Eastern Gurama. But I'd really like to highlight the uh, really strong and emerging connection we have with the Banyama people, in particular the Maraja Banyama people. Um, I think that's a really important development for the Karajin experience. So, Who's Nintiri? Nintiri are a social community organisation in Tom Price. Uh, we do a, a number of different things. We've got a childcare centre, a, a community neighbourhood centre, we've got a community health and wellbeing team, we've got a family violence counselling service, but we also like to dabble in social business and economic development and also a little bit of arts cultural development, which is where Karajini experience ultimately lands for us. But that's not interesting. I was really uh, inspired by listening to Jira talk about brand, about this country, this magnificent country in which we live and work. And, I, and I'd like you to imagine that you're in Karajini National Park and you're rattling down a dusty road with corrugations that big that your car can almost sink in them. And you drive for about 30 minutes and you get to a winding road and eventually a car park and you get out and you dust yourself off and you walk about 50 to 100 metres and then all of a sudden this incredible ancient landscape opens up in front of you and I'm talking about Kalamina Gorge for those people that have been there it is this, an amazing place billions of years old Karajani experience doesn't really need to do much you've got this incredible natural asset that's there that anybody can um, go to and see as long as they're respectful and respectful of the traditional owners of that country. Imagine as you're looking down into the gorge, there's a path that you've got to navigate to get down there. And you can see a, a gathering of about 100 people on a natural amphitheater. And you can see a natural pool with trees and reeds. And you can hear the tinkling of a waterfall in the background. And if you were to wander down and immerse yourself in that experience and with that crowd, and then you'd look up in front of you and you'd see a string quartet from the WA Symphony Orchestra. And next to the, the, the string quartet is an Aboriginal opera singer, Deborah Chetham from Short Black Opera, with a tenor next to her. And next to her is Mark Atkins, And Mark Atkins is a world-renowned didgeridoo player. And next to him is his nephew, who plays the slide guitar. And in the Welcome to Country, you have Maitland Parker, gathered out the front on the amphitheatre, belting out three songs. I have, uh, I have no idea what the songs were about, but you could just feel the raw emotion of those men singing that song in that place at that time. And then you wander back behind the crowd and you listen to these soaring vocals that come from, from Deborah. I have no idea what she was singing about, but I felt it resonating through me. And then the, the string quartet accompanies her and then, then you've got Scruff Atkins, you know, belting out a song on the ditch, improvising, accompanied by a slide guitar. It's just one of the most incredible experiences that you can have. So for me, that's just, that's one of our signature events at the Karajini Experience, is the ability for people to immerse themselves in something they've never experienced anywhere else, in a natural landscape that you don't have to sell. It's what Jira referred to as one of those hidden gems. It was actually referred to as the, you know, one of Australia's best kept secrets. It's kind of like, shh, don't tell anyone. So it's a, an amazing experience for us. Um, uh, the Nintiri Centre kind of fell into the Karajini experience. Uh, it was the brainchild of a few people uh, in the local chamber of commerce and industry who just had this idea that, um, you know, they'd like to do something other than mining. 
and they decided that they'd do this long table dinner in Karajini under the stars and 75 people turned up and they had a good time and they thought they were onto something. And so year on year from two, 2013, they created this event that just doubled in size. Now that's not sustainable, so we need to be really, really careful about that. But their, their vision was um, for the event to be a cultural catalyst. Interestingly, in the early days of the event, the, the absence of Aboriginal culture was really obvious. Um, I didn't, did not see that, but they're the conversations that I've had with people. The purpose of the event is to develop an uplifting, authentic celebration that offers the opportunity for people to connect with country and its people, the people that call that country home. So we run a series of events, um, and I'll talk about 2018 in a, little, in a, in a moment. But we have um, six guiding principles. The principles are that whatever we do, it needs to be connective. It needs to connect people to that place and to the people that call it home. It needs to be creative. And this is a bit of a challenge for me because that's one of the last things that people would uh, associate with James Jarvis as being creative. But I don't have to be. I just have to find the people that are creative. And I'm on the lookout for a assistance from an artistic director. I think you might be the audience that I need to speak to. It needs to be celebratory. We really do need to have an event that celebrates this awesome culture that we have in this country that people just aren't accessing. It needs to be collaborative. And I'll talk about the economic, cultural and community development in a moment. It needs to be empowering. It needs to be empowering for all people that come to the event. But most importantly, from my perspective, it needs to be empowering for Aboriginal people and how do I create the space for that to happen? And, 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 and finally, for me, it needs to be respectful. And that's been a difficult one because, um, you know, coming into an event in the fifth year, um, you know, there for me, there was some work that needed to be done to make sure that we had the right relationships in place with the right people, the right traditional owners. Um, and I think we're, we're getting there. It's still a work in progress. Okay, so let's talk about economic development. So that event that I told you about um, down in Kalamana Gorge, um, we call that Opera in the Gorge. Uh, that event was sold out months in advance. 100 people, it's an exclusive event. Sold out. Now, Carrigen Experience offers an array of events. You'll see it up on there. We had 52 events that we offered going over five and a half days. That, for me, um, is really significant. 70% of all of the events were free. They're accessible for families, for you know, people who were camping in Karajini. There was an event that we popped up in a particular location and people could access that. But we do need to get a sustainable business model around this, and this is the economic development component. But more than that, for me, it's about the economic development opportunity that is, exists for Aboriginal people if they choose to do it, which is about monetising elements of cultural capital. They have, Aboriginal people have an absolute economic advantage in cultural capital and connection to country. I don't have it. I love learning about it. People like me are prepared to pay for it. We've just got to get the stories right around how that happens. I'd also like to talk now about um, community development. So what, does, what impact does this actually have on the community of Tom Price? So it's a huge event. Last, this year, um, we had 50 volunteers. We leveraged about $200,000 of in-kind support from local businesses, people that connected with the vision and wanted to be part of that. We had four sea containers. We had 12 tonnes of equipment that we needed to move out to Karajini. We had toilets and um, shower blocks coming from Karatha and cranes from Newman. Um, and it all focused in on that one point. We created a VIP experience for our content providers and our sponsors. We set up, um, with permission from the elders just on the side of the airstrip, 30, about 36 tents, bell tents. It's our version of glamping. It's not the eco-retreat version of glamping, but it's, it's glamping. We have, a, we have a camp kitchen. We make homemade food. 
We have lounge chairs with carpet on the airstrip at Karajini under tents. Um, we, we, we operate those tents as though they're a, um, a hotel. That's all run from the community of Tom Price, from the people that are really committed to the arts and culture. That's a really strong community development story. What I'd also like to do is, is I'd also like to move across now to the kind of um, cultural development. And I want to tell you another story. And I think it's just hilarious. Well, I think it's hilarious. You might not laugh. Um, I'll go back to that one, leave that one up there. That's actually a very interesting event. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Uh, but the cultural development story I've got is on the op uh, it was actually the closing ceremony. So you've got four elders singing in a language that I don't understand, but I know that there's something really important going on, using clapping sticks. And you've got a corroboree of men dancing a performance, and I don't know what the story was about. I just knew that there was something really important that was going on. And then you had a kids corroboree and the kids came out and they did their performance as well. And the story that I wanted to share with you is um, after they'd done the dancing, dancing in circle, um, there was this interesting um, a part of the performance where uh, one or two um, men would come and dance in front of the elders and they'd do their kind of signature moves, not sure what they were, but they were having a blast of a time. There was lots of laughter occurring. And then some of the little kids went out with, um, I'm assuming with their dads, their uncles, their cousins, and they, there was this one little boy, and you, you would have seen him on the image. He's that little boy that's on the collateral that we have at the moment. He roars out and he does this jig and he's dancing around and waving this spear around, a ceremonial spear, and... That's not the story. The story is after, as I'm walking past his dad and this little boy, and this, um, this dad is growling this little boy, and he goes, now if you can't do it properly next time, you're not doing it at all. And I thought, there's a story going on here. There's a cultural renewal. There's a, there's a teaching, there's a lesson being shared. And it was a really significant story for me, and it's something that would just stick in my memory. Moving on to this one, this is a free event that we tried for the first time and um, in terms of Facebook and our reach, it went absolutely viral. Reach was over 35,000 on this, which is just, we got a yogi, we stuck him in one of the gorges, got a whole pile of yoga mats and people just lapped it up, loved it. The, the environment and the peacefulness of it was, a, was an event. Um, I'm not sure who thought of doing that, but it was a great idea. And I go back to um, Jonathan's talk, which is there's lots of great ideas for Karajini experience and people test them out there. Um, we, we're forecasting a more sustainable future in 2019. We have an expression of interest process that's occurring right now. Um, we expect to have uh, about 1,800 visitors. We had 1,640. The economic development component of Karajini experience has been really significant. Um, PDC assisted us to plug in a whole pile of um, data into REMPLAN, which is an event modelling software, and we, we identified with the, for the Shire of Ashburton and the people that actually visited that location, they stayed for about five and a half days in total, generated about $478,000 of extra revenue into that town, which was equivalent to about three jobs. So it's a really, really significant event. We think for the Pilbara wide, that was about 678,000. And we think that for next year, our, our, um, our event will grow just a little bit more. We don't want it to grow too hard because we're kind of hitting the, the parameters of the size of the camping experience in the park right now. That was the crobby that I was referring to. That's Thika Vonziano entertaining people at the, um, uh, the culinary experience. So Thika Vonziano is the artistic director from uh, Gascoigne in May, got a great relationship with her. She comes up, sets up her rig and does these amazing performances and did an improv session with Mark Atkins on the ditch. Um, at the Culinary Experience, when we had 150 people, we had um, uh, Wayne Stevens, a local Eastern Gorham man, um, build a whole pile of Yandy bowls. We put them on the um, tables. Um, there was about 19 of them. We sold 12 of them at 300 bucks a pop. So there was a fantastic story for him to tell and we were able to uniquely tell that story on his behalf. Um, Trevor and Maitland, guided cultural tour. Archie Roach, his quote was that of all the places that he's performed, Karajini experience is the place that he would go back to every single time and he's not a well man and he keeps on coming back. 
that's the culinary experience that I was talking to you about. And I'd just like to, um, to, to finish by saying to you, it is an event like no other. It has an opportunity like no other. It has a unique story to tell. That story is starting to be told better and more effectively. Are we there yet? No way. We've got a lot of work to do. I need an artistic director, even if it's just part time. But we definitely have something that we know works because people turn up and they come from all over the place and they love a cultural experience because there's a thirst for it and they're not getting them. Thank you.